Welcome to Figuring Out Farm Life. Nope, I did it again. Welcome to Figuring Out Homestead Life with Ginny and Allison. And today we have a guest, Jennifer Whittle of Farm 119. And thanks for joining us. Hi, Ginny. Hey, me. Hi, Jennifer. Hey. <laughs> How are you, ladies? Good. I'm good here, too. Kind of so, warm outside. Jenny, what have you been up to lately? So we have been up to a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure if I mentioned when we last chatted here on the podcast, but I did order the first batch of meat birds to be coming. I ordered some new laying hens uh, for the springtime. We have had a bunch of plumbing issues at home, plumbing slash septic issues. So we've had that to take care of, which has been so fun <laughs> to deal with and not being able to use water for like two weeks. So that was interesting. You don't really realize how much water you use until you can't use it because it's all backing up into your bathtub every time you attempt to. So that was a good time. I don't really think too much. I did get my spring seeds in the mail. That was exciting. So now I'm dreaming of the garden, which we are moving to a new location. So that will be exciting to plan out. So I'm really looking forward for all the snow to go away so we can start marking out all the new garden plots. But it's about it. Got a lot of snow. I think we have maybe over a foot of snow outside on the ground. So just hoping that that we goes away now. We have about a now. foot of mud. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Our our, yeah, our snow is gone. Season's always a good have, time. We're, we're dealing with mud. It'll be nice. I think it's supposed to freeze again next week. So I haven't checked again for the weather, but I'm hoping that we get a nice solid freeze. On our end, mm -hmm. we are getting everything ready for tapping mm -hmm. maple trees. Mm -hmm. You probably have a little bit longer to wait, Jenny, for tapping. It's weird because like this year, in March. Yeah, for New York, it's been a weird season. There's people who tapped like a week or two weeks ago, and Randy's been on oh. my case about, not really on my case. He's been thinking like, you need to get stuff ready. We need to start tapping trees because a couple of the guys at his work are like, start tapping, and I'm like, hmm. no, it's not time. So. Yeah. We'll probably be tapping Friday, and then we're gonna have a freeze. And then hopefully it'll go very well. So our guest today is Jennifer Whittle, Whittle. And I met Jennifer this summer and she and her family recently moved to New York. And she, we have a couple similarities. She is also a veteran. However, she did many, many more years. So she's officially, is it official, official, Jennifer? Are you retired? On the 29th is my last day. Of February. Leap year. Leap year, leap day. Oh, that'll be <laughs> a fun anniversary. I know. So that's kind of all I have going on. I wanted to make sure I introduce Jennifer. And we're going to get into more about Jennifer. Ginny, you have one more thing that you're doing that you've done or getting are getting ready for. Yeah, so I'm very excited to talk to you today, Jennifer, because our brand new thing that we're trying this year, which I'm excited and slash very nervous about, is we just officially secured two piglets to come here in late March. So, yeah, that's very exciting to delve further into meat, yeah, meat growing <laughs> over here. So I'm very excited to hear... All you have to say about delving into pig farming. Yeah, and we will also be getting some new piggies around the same time. So our piggies will be kind of on the same timeline. Yeah, cool. Just so we can, we, we like the family farm. And you? You too? No. I was going to say, we will not be delving into piggies this spring. <laughs> Thank like, you very oh. much. <laughs> I, I went through my phone my my album of photos which is how i keep track of things by photos 
and we have raised pigs six or seven times over the course of 10 years. And every time we finish raising pigs, we say, we're not doing this again. And then we run out of bacon. So I hope I don't say that. So, I hope I'm like, oh, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I we have raised pigs very differently than Jennifer and her family. So I'm looking forward to this conversation. I would like for Jennifer to tell us about their farm okay. and how they got into this. What a question. Um, yeah. So having been in the army for 20 years, my family and I, we've moved all over the place. We've enjoyed kind of the moving, moving, and we always dreamed of doing something different when I retired. So it was sailing or a farm and the farm seemed more natural right now just because my husband's career. And so we, I don't know, two, a year and a half ago ish, we started just looking for property. Like, okay, we want this many acres. We want the four seasons. My family just thrives in the change in the four seasons. So that was very important to us. We really didn't have many requirements other than we wanted over a hundred acres. And we didn't know if we were going to move there forever. What would we do? So we got on Zillow and kind of did all the things. And we found this place in New York. My mom's family's from up here. So it kind of just made sense. And the whole family was on board. And then we started visiting. And then we were all just kept falling in love with the quiet, really the quietness of the area, the beauty. It's a very romantic kind of bought to us just because of the history of the place. So we ended up saying, we're going to move to the farm. And we just showed up in July. Didn't really know exactly what we were going to do. Everybody told us, be patient, be patient. But we are not patient people. So alas, here we are. The farm 119, we are not that creative or we're just superly, overly creative. And we didn't know what to do for our name and we didn't want our like family name in it because and so we were like well we have 119 acres how about farm 119 okay. <laughs> everybody's like yeah that works and so it's very easy for us to uh, kind of laugh about the there's really no meaning to the farm name and that's just really funny yeah so does that kind of answer the bigger picture i guess so i do have the kids we have a 16 year old girl yeah. And 11-year-old boy-girl twins and two dogs. And my mom came up here with us. Yep. I was curious. That's funny about the far name. I was curious how you came up with that name. I was like, oh, I wonder what the significance of the 119 is. I'm like, maybe it has something to do with her being, was it the army that you were in? What branch? In the army. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I was like, maybe it has something to do with that. I don't know. <laughs> no. So, so what kind of animals are you guys raising currently? Currently, we have some laying chickens, which when we came here in July, I had to go back to Texas for a few months. And my husband's kind of weak. And the day that I left to go back, the twins were like really upset. And so they ended up coming home with chickens. No plan. He bought oh. everything. And like, well, now we have chickens. I was like, okay, this is good. And they're all still alive. 22 chickens from July. They're all still alive and they're laying, I don't know, 18, 19 eggs a day. And then we had turkeys. And they went to freezer camp, which we, we stole from Allison. They went, they went away. <laughs> the, the turkeys are meh. And then we have pigs and I just, I'm in love with the pigs. I love the pigs, but the future us will involve cattle. We're just like right on the cusp of mm. making the decision to buy the starter herd. We're just nervous. Maybe as you are about the pig situation. Mm -hmm. So we, we have had five feeder pigs. We got them in August. I wasn't even here. Aaron and the kids went and picked up these Berkshire crosses. They, three of them 
left us on Sunday night, Monday night, and the other two left a few weeks ago to get butchered. And then we have three other pigs. They're a Hungarian woolly breed. They're called Mangalitsas. They're mm-hmm. bred right now, I think, primarily out of Portugal or Spain, and they come to America. They have like long noses, kind of like ant eaters, and they grow very slow. Like it'll take 18 months to grow out a pig. So right now, so kind of like the coon, coony type of thing. Yep. And they're, the mangas are interesting because if you're the, they're like the, the wagyu of pork. Oh. Yeah. So they have a lot of fat, marbling. It's not, I don't, I've never had it. I didn't even know manga litsa was a thing until a butcher talked to us about it, that he wanted to sell manga litsa meat. <laughs> so right now we just have the three manga litsas. And if one cool. of them is pregnant, you will have a few more. I know, <laughs> but we don't know. And now, excuse me, I'm getting over the flu. We don't know, but our, we do have a boar. And he, we hope, will impregnate the the two gilts that we have. And they are from different genetics. You're not you're not line breeding. <laughs> yes. And then the uh, Amazon made a delivery, so Storm started barking. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, Jen. Well, I think that's it. Those are the animals we currently have. But I can go on so, and on. Like, if what's your follow-up question? So have you, Is I'm sorry. So, it, well, if you have this litter of piglets from the, the ones you have now, will that be the first that will be bred on your property? Or have you done that also? Yep. That will be the first. And I really want a pharaoh. I want to experience it. I want to, I mean, I've never been intimately involved. I mean, I've seen like dogs and cats, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I want to witness the birth. I want to see, you know, I want to, I don't know, be like the pig nursing mom. And, and the whole family <laughs> does too. We want to go through it because maybe we like to have pregnant pigs and they have babies and then we're just selling babies, right? Maybe we don't want to mm-hmm. grow wild pigs. We don't know what we like and don't like yet. But I will say, I know right now we love the pig connection. So we don't know what the, that looks like. But we do. We really are excited for Oreo to impregnate the two girls. It'll be fun. Or so. Uh, on an inter- interjection on this, we have raised pigs, like I said. We, we raised ours very differently than you have raised yours. You and Aaron trained yours very well on electricity, mm. on just two electric lines, where we had ours in a, in a pen, pens that we could rotate, but we had them in a, a pen <clears throat> on grass and dirt and weeds and stuff, which was also very different from the farm that we bought them from, where that farmer kept them in a barn. So it's... It's a very different way, and I think, Jennifer, the way you guys have raised them, being trained on the electric seems to be the way to do it, to me, in my mind. Yeah. So the electric, I love the electric fencing. We use it because it's easy, because my husband can pound the post and we can throw up a fence really quickly. They are so trained to the, the fence and buckets because we shake buckets that we can kind of get them to go wherever. And the mangalitsas are trained to bananas. So we just moved them. They were up on a hill. We kind of had them further away. But once the feeders left on Monday night, Tuesday, we moved them to the barn. And now they have a huge yard and then like another huge area. And we did that with bananas. We just walked with bananas. Now, granted, Curly. That's so funny. Yeah. And they love bananas so much. So every day they get a bunch of bananas. And so it's kind of how we train them. But the electricity is even better, even when it's off, because snow got on it. It grounded out. Whatever reason. I mean, our pigs, they won't. They'll go right 
to it and they'll back up. Yep. And like when we move them, we'll even take the the strains completely out of their eyesight up down. They cannot see the yellow and black anywhere. And they it's so hard for them to cross that kind of line of departure. It's so mental that I mean it took it takes a long time. But I love the electricity. It it really just kind of makes life easy for everybody. Hmm. And the shock is, you know, very minimal. I've been tased with like 50,000 volts. I mean, it's just a, that little thing. It doesn't hurt. But with the pigs, right, they're going, it's going to get their nose a lot of the times or the tips of their ears. And that's kind of irritating. We see with the, the pigs. Yeah, I highly recommend the electric fence. And we use solar. I mean, it's a very low maintenance solution. That's what we're planning on getting is uh, <clears throat> it's actually, but it's netting. You use the strands. So we were planning on getting pig netting fencing. I'm not sure. So that. we had the, uh, what was it, Allison? We had around the turkeys. It's kind of like the premier one fencing. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. is by Premier One, but it's for hogs. So, I don't know. then my biggest fear is the pigs getting out. It is the well, well, no you, but they want to stay home too, right? So, yeah. at, at the beginning, like when we got the the piglets, I wasn't here. I got here a couple of days later. But Aaron and the kids made them like a little nursery, and so they had pig the hog panel around it under a lean to, but. Inside the hog panel, Aaron had already had the electric fence up in there to teach them because they don't really, they don't know. Mm -hmm. So every time they would kind of get too close or whatever, they get shot. So about a week after we had them, we needed them to have more space. So we opened it up a little. I think the video might be on YouTube. But Georgie, our like favorite piggy, and he just ran and got shocked. Ran right out, got shocked, turned around, and ran back home. He escaped the next day, and he was just outside the fence. But never, we've never, aside from that, had an electricity failure cause an escape. They don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. They want to be home because we give them food, water, bananas, snacks, love, whatever, hay. So, I mean, they kind of like it here. Mm -hmm. We try to separate one of the mangalitsas from the other two because she was mean and she lifted broke through her home ran through an electric fence and rejoined her other family the other two oh so you know but we that's why we spend a lot of time with them that's why we do because mm -hmm. like, we want them to be here we want them to fear this little electric line and they do Yes, it's important to try. I think with the electric fencing, it's important to keep them in a contained area with the electric inside of it, so that they have a period where they're learning that hey, that's mm -hmm. that's what we don't want to touch. Yep. And your pigs are gorgeous, Jennifer. Thanks. We'll have to have you send Ginny a couple photos so that she can put them on the podcast social Not media. Yeah. yeah. To go along with the podcast. <laughs> So when you first moved to the farm, did you know you wanted pigs specifically? Like, how did you choose pigs for your aunt, like for your animal? So when we moved to the farm, the the promise to the kids were there would be animals, right? Because you think farm animals, and it really it was it has only been cattle, and it was just like we couldn't even think about anything else. And then we got here, and we're like, okay. What what are some quick wins for the kids? And it was chickens, pigs, turkeys. But I foresee the pigs having a lasting kind of home here at the farm in some way, shape, or even if it's seasonal down the road, right? Maybe mm -hmm. we just do feeders from March to September or something like that. But no, there really there really wasn't a plan because we we made the decision in March to move, and we we're here in July, and we had. Mm -hmm. A, a lot to do to get here. Have you yeah. in your in your move? And I know I know a little bit more about your your situation. 
are there any things that you would change in your move to the farm? The move to the farm? No. Like, and how we did it? Or like, the just go, yeah. how we did it? No. No. Okay. Do you want to talk about some of the things that you guys have done to the land around your farm? Like you guys have cleared a lot. Yeah. And that yeah, yeah, yeah. your property yeah, so, wasn't farmed. No, it was, it wasn't, it was just not used for, I don't know, 20, 30 years. And so it's like, okay, we're going to move to the farm. All right. And we need a tractor. Okay. We'll get a tractor. And I'm like, oh, okay, we needed this. We needed this. And then. Aaron has just done a lot of brush hogging. I mean, it's just tractor work, tractor work, tractor work, clearing, clearing, clearing. We've had to hire professionals, right? Because there's some things we just can't do. We don't want to kill ourselves or anybody around us. We we have a huge irrigation problem. And so really the, the issue right now with the cattle, we're not going to get these huge creatures and be stressing over water. So we have... Mm abundance of water but where we have these really nice pastures we don't have a solution yet they're like okay well you can just like truck it well we wouldn't want to do that all the time maybe we should be responsible right so because the cattle they they're the biggest thing we will ever have we we figured maybe we should slow down and so the water solution is what we're working for the cattle I think we got it figured out. Put up a lot of fencing. We did it. We found some really trustworthy bush people around, and they just so sweet and did a really good job. <clears throat> Saved us a lot of money. Yeah, and then just house on the work on the house just so we can survive and it doesn't come tumbling down on us. A lot of barn work. Just trying to see what that looks like for the future. I don't know. So there was like a barn and in, in some huge structure when you were oh, there. Oh, yeah. nice. The barn is huge. It's really big. So we we lucked out. It used to be a an old dairy farm. I think at their largest, oh, okay. they had 86 heads of cow. And uh, everybody knew the farm. And yes, ma'am. So on your your barn is absolutely huge. Jenny, I just want you to know it's completely different because ours was also an old dairy farm, but it's a completely different setup than our barn. Our barn is, it's, it's called a bank barn because it's built into the side of a hill. And your barn also is, Jennifer, in, basically it's in the side of a hill, but it is a long barn yeah. as opposed to a two-story bank barn. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's a completely different setup, but it's really cool. Sorry, yeah. that's I just wanted cool. to explain to Ginny. Yeah, that. And right now, the barn has just been amazing. It's a great the ch chickens with the mud and the snow and the rain. It's like okay, well, I don't want chicken poo everywhere, but I love that they can go in the barn and mm -hmm. be <laughs> and get some respite. But yeah, the barn right now has the mangas. That's where they're sleeping at night and hanging out yep are you cool. pleased with the way that the pigs from the feeder pigs to the mangoes how they have kind of helped till the land around your farm yes i i we're not good about documenting but we have used them to, to their noses are so strong right and you know the ground up here is just so tough and we, we moved them up to the side of the hill, one, because we thought Curly was pregnant. So we're like, we're going to induce labor or she's going to lose weight, right? Because right now we're freaking out. Is she having babies on Christmas? Like, are we going to be parents? And so we moved them up to the hill because, again, but and they just plowed through just so much brush. And the feeders that we get in March, we will put them in the nursery to train them to the wire. and then. We're dreamers here. We think we're going to get them on a trailer and move them to the woods where they will live out the next six months. And then so they'll be just always in the woods and we'll come see them. I think it will affect the relationship probably a little bit, right? 
Because if I have to go walk 500 meters, am I going to casually go spend 20 minutes with a pig? So that's something we're going to have to work through. Um, yeah. If you have to walk that far, you may decide that you want to spend more time out there with them. <laughs> right. Instead of turning around and going right now. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I it's mean, pouring it's down easy. running. Yeah. It's easy to to just sit there. Well, you know, really with any animals and just kind of watch them. But I just love these pigs. I text my husband and random people all the time. I say, I just love these damn pigs. Why am I? Why do I have pig toenail polish? Like, what am I doing? But, you know, I really like them. Yep. And not to not to talk about the, well, it's not a, it's not a negative. The plus side is the pork is amazing. Right. I've I've had I've had pork from your pigs, and it is awesome. Yeah. And the three that just went on Monday, they went to a USDA butcher, which is exciting, meaning that we could actually sell the pork legally. But right, happy pigs produce happy food. And I have struggled my whole entire life with meat. I have gone months, almost a year without eating meat a couple times. And so as I think through that process that my whole family, I would prefer to eat something that I know was taken care of well. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to eat bacon, well, I'm going to spend either more money and know it came from a reputable farm somewhere or hell, we'll grow it ourselves. That's kind of where we are right now. And a lot of people are like, oh, I could never. And I'm like, well, so I can't either. So I can either quit eating meat, which I can do, or I'll just be best friends and love the animals that we're going to ultimately eat. That has probably been the hardest part for me. I mean, I've cried over the pigs. Emma has, you know, it's, but they're happy and they just have one, you know, one bad day. And mm -hmm. hopefully I have that life, you know, just one bad day at the end. That's kind of how we do it. Yes. Yeah, it's so funny that like sometimes there's like a stigma with farmers that like, oh, you don't care about the animals, like, you know, because we obviously they ultimately are here for a for a purpose and it's, you know, most often for food. And it's like, no, you don't understand. Like we, we love these animals more than we spent all all our days taking care of them, making sure they're healthy, making sure they have fresh food, fresh water, you know, they're in a safe area, like all this. It's like, we're so much more invested than someone that just goes yeah. into a grocery store and picks up package out of the deli counter. It's like, you don't know. And it, so it's, it's just funny. Like people, sometimes they can't, if they don't get it, they're like, I think, yeah, like you said, like I could never do that. And it's like, well, but this animal had the best possible life. And that makes me feel so much better about eating it. So yeah, just for the quality and, of life plus in, like you said, the healthier the animal, you're eating it. You are what you eat. So you're going to be in taking a more nutritious food item if, you know, the animal is raised correctly. Yeah. Just funny. Yeah, I, I know. And it's a tough subject but i'm becoming a lot more comfortable with it you know yeah if i'm gonna eat meat i should be responsible for that life because life is precious mm -hmm. right it's super precious so right yeah. i'm excited pigs what what kind are they cool well, jenny what kind of pigs are you i they're like a cross let me see Tam I believe they're Tamworth Doroc crosses. Yeah. So Sounds reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost not, I'm almost 100 percent positive. That's what that's what they are. So and Aaron um, wants to get some yeah. crosses. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm they grow. I can now oh. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just saying they I think they finish a little faster, the Durocs, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 
he was saying like seven months he thinks I'll end up having him for. So okay, it's really just going to depend when I can get into, because we are having a mobile butcher come to our property. So that's, awesome. that's I have to, you know, organize all that with him. But so I have to basically, when, okay. once I get them, they were like, we book up so fast. So like, as soon as you have the piglets, like physically on your property, call us so that we can get you into the schedule. So <laughs> I love that. A lot of that. Over time. Yeah, I just, well, we live on a big hill, basically. So that's why I really was leery to do this. Cause I'm like, once we get the pigs up there, they will be little, we can like move them up there easily. But once they're, Two, three hundred pounds, like there's no way to get a, a tractor or anything up to where they're going to be. So I'm like, well, the only option is to have a mobile butcher. <laughs> so luckily bananas. I was able to find one. Or bananas. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't, yeah. That'd be too much stress. Channel, lure them down onto this busy main road. It's like praying. Oh my God. In the trailer. <laughs> So, but yeah, I mean, cause then they're left, they'll be less stressed and all that without having to move them about anyways, I'm thinking. So yeah, yeah, that should be, it should be interesting. I'm sure my whole, I'm like, I just can't get too attached. Like I know what's going to be the ultimate end here. So, <laughs> you know, it'll be good because we've been buying pork from a woman who has been raising them. Um, on the past few years. And I'm like, I think we can just try to do this ourselves and see how it goes. So you're paying, we'll you're, you were paying a lot of money for pork. Yes. Jenny. yes. Randy and I yes. were shocked when we heard how much you were paying for, it was half, right? It wasn't even a whole half of a pig. It was half. Yeah, half. And yeah. I was shocked. It was like, that's, that's yeah. a lot of money for half a pig. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot more than I paid for the half a cow. <laughs> well, yeah, so. and clearly, clearly, you guys do get a friends and family discount with the half a cow. Yeah, um, but I mean, but, it was a lot of a lot of money I spent on that. So I'm like, I think we can do this for. Yeah, we can get a lot more pork for probably close to the same amount of money. <laughs> so definitely, yeah. and I think you'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah, and just the experience the of it. Mm -hmm. Well, and that area also has a huge poison ivy problem, like raspberry, brambles, like all sorts of crap. So I'm like, oh, they'll hopefully, I'm hoping, root that all up. That'll help with that issue that we have up there. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Definitely. <laughs> See, I oh, have a question. Is there anything else anybody has? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so where you're only using like the, well, you're using the, the, the two electric strands. Do you guys have like mm -hmm. predators out there or how does that work for, you know, protecting the pigs from predators? Or are they pretty like self, they can handle them on their own? Ooh. I'm sure there's like a, an age, right, where nothing, pe things are no longer interested in the pigs. At the beginning, that's what I was okay. afraid of. I'm like, oh my God, whatever these Fisher cats are, whether they're real or not, they are real. We're like, I'm like, oh my God. They're real. And they're very real. Yeah. I was really afraid of that. But I mean, they grow so fast. And we had the five of them. I don't know. At some point, I just quit worrying about the predators we've had a bear here what else is around? oh we have a ton of coyotes we have a mm -hmm. lot i mean they're on our uh, trail cams every night for whatever reason we've never had a problem i mean i don't know allison what's your take on the predators and pigs in in the let me just say we've raised pigs six to seven times in 10 years i am not an expert i by far, I'm not an expert. We never had a predator problem with our, with, we've had more of a predator problem with our chickens than with any other animal on the farm. And typically it's a fox. A fox is not gonna come in with a sow and her piglets. 
because mm-hmm. the sow will protect her piglets. But if you're having feeders brought in at like eight weeks old, I mean, they're like the size of a football. Um, mm-hmm. Having having a hard hard fence with electric will help. I've never had anything attack pigs. And Ginny, I believe that, I mean, you have basically the same types of predators we have. Um, yeah. I don't know anybody who's, to me, a bear is going to go after bird feeders, beehives. I don't, I haven't heard of any, like, bear attacks on pigs. Yeah, because even, like, I've been researching online because that's one of the other, that's, like, really, well, them escaping, but the predators is my main concern for when they're, like, teeny tiny. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I'm like, are do predators just, are they not attracted to pigs? Because there's really no information online about predators. So, I mean, I was planning on, like, shutting them in at night, like, into a lean-to, just maybe for a couple weeks until they're not really small. I don't know. But I'm like, is that even necessary? <laughs> but I don't we'll know see. if it's necessary, but... Being in a lean-to, if if it's an option. Ours were in a lean-to. I mean, they were in a lean-to, and did that help? I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Luke's going to build it, so he can build it however I want him to, so we can have a door on it, you know? So. <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, that's the nice thing. It was like, it's like, all of our buildings here are custom. <laughs> Draw a little idea down for my husband. <laughs> very lucky that he then goes and builds them for me so <laughs> but yeah okay I'm just curious um, I don't think you have to I please forgive me if I'm wrong I don't think you have to worry about bears attacking piglets Jennifer fishers are very real I know I have pictures I've, of them I've never seen one attack an animal but I have seen them Having dogs help scare them off. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if you have fishers up there, Jenny. I've never seen any. I've seen on my game cam coyotes, fox. I know there's bear. I haven't seen any like weasel. Obviously, those are like way too little for the pigs, but for my chickens and stuff. But yeah, I haven't seen a fisher cat. So they're they're big Mm -hmm. and they're scary. Yeah, I've heard them. They could, at my they could take out a small house. dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. On that note. Well, cool. Any other question? No, I guess, well, I guess my last question is just like any advice you have to, because you guys obviously just like, you didn't have farming experience. You just kind of jumped into this, delved right in. So do you have any advice to others that might just be looking to start getting into this world of farming? Yeah, we ask a lot of people's opinions and we ask for advice. And anybody that comes over typically gives us advice. We also seek advice. There's a Facebook group. It's called Pastured Pigs for Prof, something like this. And I have asked a lot of questions in there. There's a lot of resources there. I think like people have told us, you'll figure it out yourself. And, you know, whatever works for you will work for you. Mm-hmm. I I just think every day, I, you know, I want my pigs to be happy. And that's kind of, the de- that guides my decisions and my kids, uh, not just me, right? But for the animals. But I think just, you can do it. I'm excited. It, I would not be nervous about two pigs. No, I mean, you got this. I, I have built relationships with like the last three of our feeders were like the three that we had the least relationship with. So it's very bizarre. We had another month with them. And I mean, this one that we thought never cared about humans, you would walk into the barn and he'd come grunting at you and doing the snort. 
apparently they come at you and they do like a snort at you real close. It means, hi, I love you. I like you. And within just a few weeks after the two dominant figures are gone, you know, now we're having a, a meaning. I felt a meaningful relationship with the pig. So I just listen to what other people say, keep some of it, throw away what you don't want. And then, you know, whatever hybrid approach you find, you know, I don't know. I'm excited to follow your journey with the piggies. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited too. Cool. I think that's it. Yeah. Do you want to share how folks can connect with you on social media so they can follow along with you in your, your pig journey? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In future cat- We're on Facebook. It's just Farm 119. Instagram is 119 Farm. And we are also on YouTube, Farm 119. We're, we're all over. We're, we're kind of on and off about what we do. It's just a, a lot of work. But we do try to document some when we can. Awesome. All right. Well, we thank everyone for joining us today. This is our first guest, so we hope you all enjoyed it. You can find us on Instagram at Figuring Out Homestead Lights. You can also find Allison at Zing and Vine Homestead on Instagram. And I am Mrs. White Homemade Life on Instagram as well. So please follow us all along and we will see you again soon. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.